Hello to everybody and welcome back to another layout update. Hopefully I'll actually finish this one. This one I'm talking about a layout that I've built to fit in two box files. But before we get started on that, I think it's time we make our way back to the start of this project, which if I'm honest was about three weeks ago. So I'm gonna level with you all. I lost my modeling mojo about four months ago. I've done little projects and things, but I've kind of not done that as much modelling as I wanted to this year. I've done a massively brilliant year, if I'm honest. But, my modelling's kind of suffered because of that. And, i would kind of stalled on a lot of projects, including a layout I was building. Nothing massive, it was only a little wide point. And I will still finish that layout. Um, but, I'd stalled on a lot of things, and I guess I was a little bit afraid of going back to it in case I messed up. So... I knew that I wanted to build a little layout that I could just test skills on and get myself back up to speed and get a little bit of confidence under me again. So, around this time I read a brilliant thread on our own web called Brimley Straight. Uh, there'll be a link in the description to it. And it's actually what you're seeing on screen now. It's a little box file layout um, that's actually built onto four or five box files that represents a really urban scene. I think is really, really interesting. Something that's not really modelled and box file modelling rarely gets that good in the sense that box file layouts are often moving dioramas, whereas this is an active layout. So that got me thinking what I could do with a box file or two. And then I began talking with my friend, Mr. Luke Noble, who was getting rid of his Finn Larry Holt layout, which is a brilliant little layout. I'm sure people have seen it on the exhibition circuit. It's a really, really simple, basic idea, but it's executed really well, and it gives a really good vibe of that abandoned-ish halt that not many people use, but is just limping on. So that was kind of floating around in the back of my mind. I saw these pictures come up on Facebook, uh, which are of different halts across the country. Again, they've all got that feel of end of the line, not a lot going on, but they are somehow still open. And all these things were kind of floating around in my head until I came up with the idea of why don't I do a tiny little colliery exchange based in a relatively urban but also a little bit of a rural scene that has a little platform for me to run potential passenger services on. So out I went to the range this was actually and I picked up a box file. Shame I couldn't video it properly. And this is me using said box file with another one I had uh, to mock up what I want the layout to include. Now initially I was just going to use one box file, I've ended up opting to use two because it gives me a little bit more space and I have to cut the track uh, at strange angles. But you can see here we've got the point right at the end, the bits of track were picked up for a couple of quid from a local model shop because it was second hand. I did have the point left over from another layout. So the aim for this was also to not spend any money or as little money as possible um, because I'm not about that. But you can see here, I've finished it, uh, or at least got my ideas down. I've got some sky tracks, uh, warehouses there, I've got a Terry Staus down the bottom end that we used as a scenic break, and I've also got a platform here with an old coach on it. And you can see here, we've got the Kerr Stewart Victory there, we've got a 105. Just getting a feel for what this potentially could look like. I also began to toy with having a second angle uh, so the layout could be operated and viewed from different angles. You can see here I've actually glued the track down um, and decided to put the concrete sleeper track uh, on the outside just because it curved a little bit better uh, and here I am just using some rail, uh, rail tech I think it is paint uh, just to give it more of a natural colour. So this is me just beginning to build up the uh, scene, uh, the, some of the more natural scenes, some of the more rural scenes, the less man-made scenes. Um, here I am uh, with the paper mache in the background, just test running some locomotives. Uh, you can see there's quite a bump there, but that's because I stuffed loads of stuff underneath it, the wires and things, and also it's on one of the heatproof mats in the kitchen. So things do run well. These aren't representative videos. These were just ones I really quickly got while I was on my way working. Um, but yeah, I'm pleased it both runs. This is currently running off a Hornby System 90, but eventually be DCC. I've wired it for DCC anyway. Um, but yeah, it runs well on analog. Uh, so you can see I've painted the 
hillside uh, with a brown acrylic paint. Um, I think it's from B&M, no one really cares. But basically it was one of the cheap ones that you get loads of and it's really nice with base layers. What I'm sticking down is hanging basket liner. Um, now this came about when we were clearing Nan's shed, a massive roll probably of about two B four foot. So I probably only cut about a metre square off. Uh, and I just shredded it just so I could get this long grass look, long dead grass. It kind of gives me a angle for which I can aim the layout in terms of things are a little bit dead, maybe it's getting on to the autumn time of year. Here I am painting up my little shelter. And this kind of brings us to where we are now. So what better place to start than one of the fiddle yard entrances? This is the main one where both branch line and collier traffic will eventually come. You can see the wires there. Uh, I cheated and I used some leftover pico ones. Anyway, one of the fish plates was sold on. Anyway, the intent for this is this will have a brick abutment put on it either side, and this will become a really basic overbridge that'll probably come out to about here. Um, something that'll keep in a separate wax file and pop in place when required. It just gives it a little bit more of an urbanish feel because the hillside is very, very rural. You can see the ballast is really, really messy. I didn't need to knit it up. I need to weather it down on the track as well. But I'd like to say this is very much the first couple of days working on it. So let's spin around to the other end, which has got a little bit more going on. So here is the aforementioned other end. You can see here, we've got an old Hornby coach that I'm gonna use as a shelter, slash booking office, slash whatever else it needs to be. Uh, I just thought it'd be something quite cool um, to have an old wooden coach still being used as something for the uh, more modern railway. Uh, the platform itself needs setting in properly. You've just seen me put them all down so you know that they're not set up in properly. Um, <clears throat> where's one that I got for free from my local model shop? Um, I was buying a couple of other bits like the track, so I got it for free. Uh, I was going to scratch build it, but uh, I couldn't be bothered when I saw it, if I'm honest. It's wooden in its construction, it's been clad with uh, paper, I think it is, and some kind of textured um, surface on the top. I'm just going to add some plaster card to either end uh, to really fill it in, and I'm going to add a set of steps down here. Like I mentioned, the idea for this layout is that it can be viewed from both sides. So, let's have a look from the other side. This side is obviously more colliery focused. We've got a road coming across here, come across to the station and whatever the factory builds there. Uh, obviously, it's a long way of being finished. I need to send it down. It's dried, which is going to put it down yesterday. Uh, so I was a little bit worried it wouldn't. But yeah, it needs to be sanded down. It's got a lot of work to do, but I want the pothole effect, hence why it's quite scruffy at the moment. But yeah, we sand it down so stuff can run over it happily. And I'll have some postable road vehicles which I'll be able to swap about with whatever I'm running. So say if I'm running Steam, I'm more likely to run an Austin 7. If I'm running DMUs, I might be able to get away with running things like Triumph Heralds, things like that. Got a terraced house here that's going to be <coughs> hinting at the urban side of this layout. But it also will be used as a scenic break. Uh, for when operating from this side. Um, <clears throat> I've always really liked when trains and tracks come out from in between houses or warehouses, so I've decided to put that into this layout. Speaking of warehouses, these are the two sky tracks ones. They're a little bit off being finished, if I'm honest. They've only had one layer of paint on. They've got various gutters and capping stones to be put on the top and things, but gives you an idea for now. Um, the idea for them is, again, used as a bit of a scenic break, but when viewed from the other side. Uh, but it also gives me an opportunity to give that more urban, more busy feel. The idea is that maybe this branch line was built to serve the colony and the warehouse or the factory, uh, but the factory lost the rail traffic to the road. And accordingly, the only reason it's really open is because of the colliery. So we'll come back to that when I've posed everything on the layout. So here we are with a little bit of stock posed on it. We've got a 105 DMU there, being sat in the station waiting on the very end of its line, probably due to run back. 
and be the driver's last turn of the day. And we've got some Calgary open wagons coming up to be left in the station platform to be collected once the 105 is left. I hope this gives you an idea of what the layout could potentially turn into. I'm quite impressed at how much could be fitted into two box wheels. Obviously I could have done more, I could have done less, but overall I'm quite happy with what I've managed to fit into it. It's going to give me an excuse to run some colliery engines and some of my quote unquote mainline fleet, such as the 105, my class 25 and also my class 20, which if I'm honest haven't had a stomping ground for about three or four years. So, I for one am very happy to be working on this layout. But, it's by no means finished. On the still to do list, we've got finish the road surface, we've got make the bridge. We've also got to finish the platform. And I'm going to put about the building, which is obviously the coach, which needs a roof and possibly an interior, as well as steps, plus ends, and it will take a bit of weathering as well. We need to do the warehouses too. And also finish off the terraced house. In terms of track work, I need to weather it. As well as the ballasting, which needs to be sorted. As well as one of the point mechanisms. I use one of the old train crash podcast, uh, train crash models ones of them. And I'd also need to sort some figures. So that's my to-do list. Let's see how it looks next time in another video. So on that note, I think we're going to leave you. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you have any ways I can improve the layout or this video, let me know. And I'll see you in another one, hopefully soon. ta -ra.